Okay, well, it's gloomy outside in Houston right now. You can barely see anything, but you can see excitement and a bright future for the Houston Texans. D'Amico Ryans announced yesterday as the Texans' new head coach. He'll be introduced tomorrow, of course, uh, with the San Francisco 49ers the past six seasons. Defensive coordinator over uh, the league's top defense and, of course, a Houston Texans all-time great. Uh, drafted by the Houston Texans, played the majority of his career there, the leading tackler uh, in Houston Texans history. So there's a lot of excitement about it. So for more on this, I want to welcome in right now. First, I got to say, as a Mississippi guy, a Macomb native, North Pike and Southwest CC product, uh, Glover Quinn, of course, played for the uh, Houston Texans, started for three seasons alongside D'Amico Ryans. Glover, good morning. How you doing? Thanks for being with us. Good, man. How you doing? I'm doing great and uh, a lot of excitement here uh, around D'Amico Ryans, obviously, for Texans fans, for the organization. You know the guy so well. What is the organization getting a, 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 as a coach and as a person uh, in D'Amico Ryans? I mean, they're getting a great leader, stand-up guy, uh, smart, very, 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 very intelligent. Um, you know, I remember when I got there, you know, everybody called him Cap because he was a captain, but he was unquestioned the captain, the leader. He just had that demeanor, that pause about him. And he was a great player, a playmaker. Um, you know, I love everything about D'Amico um, from, you know, watching him on the field, off the field, family guy, just so much that he stands for. And I think it's very, 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 very dope for the team to bring him back uh, in this role. I think they need that um, to, to restore the culture um, of Houston Texans football, bring some excitement back, um, get the community back. And I know there are tons of former players that play here uh, with D'Amico that still live here that, you know, can't wait to get back into the building to support him and help him in every every way possible. And uh, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> Glover, can you talk a little bit more about that, like how it's important, why it's important that D'Amico played for Houston, that he won here? I mean, you see coaches have plenty of success in the NFL where they had no connection to the franchise at all. Why, why does that matter if it does with D'Amico in Houston? Well, I think, like you said, it's a connection. You know, the Texans were the team that drafted D'Amico, um, gave him an opportunity to, to, you know, live out his dream as being an NFL football player. Um, he played here for some years and did a lot of great things in here. Obviously established himself as a great football player in the NFL, uh, went on and played some more, and then now he's getting to come back. Um, but the reputation that he had on the field, the reputation that he had in the community, the people that he touched, the lives that he changed off the field, has everyone excited and believing that he is someone that can change the culture and get it back to – you know, 2011, 2012, when the Texans were winning a division and was respected in that in an AFC, you know, South division. So I'm excited for the Miko. I know the community excited. I've been seeing so much stuff on social media. Um, it's going to be awesome. And I can't wait. Let me ask you this, a, a little more uh, significant conversation in some ways. There, there's obviously a huge conversation uh, around the NFL about uh, coaching opportunities for black coaches, and Houston has now had four consecutive black coaches if you go back to Romeo Cornell in the interim, and yet there are a lot who posit, some on this network, I saw Stephen A. Smith say it earlier this week, uh, that black coaches, I mean, have all only had one year. When you look at uh, Lovey Smith previously, David Culley, is that fair? How do you see it? And, and sort of where uh, D'Amico Ryans fits into that in terms of being given a fair chance to succeed. I think he's going to be given more than a year. I, I think that those other two coaches, like we talked about, I don't know if they had a connection here. I don't know if they connected well with the players, being older guys. Um, Houston is a young, vibrant team, upcoming. Um, and I don't know if they had that connection. I think D'Amico having that connection with the city, um, it's going to put fans in the seats just because they want to come out and support D'Amico Ryan's. The product that he's going to put on the field, you know, him and, and the GM, uh, Nick Casario is going to have to, you know, rebuild his roster. Um, it's going to start with a with a high draft pick coming up in this year's draft. Be interesting to see what they do in free agency and how they start to build his roster and how they assess what they have already. Um, 
But I think he'll be giving his first shake. He signed a six-year deal, so I don't think you will sign a six-year deal and, and then they get you out of there after one year. So I think those other two guys, you know, didn't really have the connection um, with the players, with the community. Um, and I think it's just going to be different for the Texans with D'Amico, just having, you know, the former players to be excited to be back around in the sure. building, um, you know, promoting the team throughout the city, the excitement in the city is going to be at an all-time high, I feel like, coming up this year. Um, and like I said, with them having a high draft pick, it's going to be exciting to see who they take early in the draft and just how everything unfolds and leading up into the off-season program and OTAs and training camp. It's going to be super exciting, and they just have to come out and be prepared to, to play and play at a high level. You look at that uh, draft coming up, number two pick, all signs pointing towards the Texans taking a quarterback. Glover, can D'Amico win in Houston without getting it totally right at the quarterback position? Do, how important is it that they hit and get that guy for the franchise? Well, I think you have to have a quarterback to, to win in this league. I mean, I think we saw that, you know, Sunday with the 49ers. You know, I think, you know, when they had Brock Purdy, um, they felt like they had a chance because of what Brock Purdy had done to to show that he is a capable player in this league. Once Brock Purdy went out the game, it was like, wow, because you knew that even though the 49ers have a good defense, you know, we all know that it all works hand in hand, right? right. Good defense and good offense, you know, helps each other out. So when you're a good defense, but you're facing another good offense and you're on the field repeatedly, at some point they're going to score. You know, when you turn the ball over right after a touchdown and give them the ball in the red zone already, it's very difficult to keep good teams out constantly. And so that doesn't mean that you don't have a good defense. That's just you're not working together as a team. And so he understands that. He know you have to have a quarterback to be able to lead the team, lead the offense. Um, but he's going to definitely want to make sure that his defense is tough-minded as well. Be interesting to see, you know, who he puts on his staff from an offensive coordinator standpoint, from position coaching guys. But I think, you know, the leader that he is of men and, and, and who he is, I think that's going to resonate well with the guys. I think he's going to connect well with the guys. You see his guys playing very energetic, hard-nosed, physical, tough, exactly the way he played as a player. That's what he's going to be preaching to those guys. You know, the preparation, how smart he was. All, no stone is going to go unturned in, in that regard. And so it'll be interesting to see, you know, the pieces that they add and how they start to build it, build this team. But I expect them to be good. Go over 10 years in the league, former NFL All-Pro, of course, uh, with the Detroit Lions, drafted by Houston. Uh, you look good. Just tell us uh, how you're doing these days. Catch the fans up on what's going on. Oh, man, I'm doing great, man. I feel great. Uh, still live here in the city. Well, I don't live in the city. I kind of live out in the suburbs, but I still live in the Houston area. Um, and, yeah, right now I just be doing podcasts, and I do uh, – Started a little business doing custom picture framing. You know, you see jerseys and stuff behind me. So I do jerseys, pictures, whatever, art. Just kind of have fun with it. And, yes, I do do it myself with my two hands. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of what I do, man. It's chill with my kids, get involved in, in that stuff. And that's about it. Former Houston Texan safety Glover Quinn with us here on ABC 13. Glover, thanks so much, man. We'll see you around the city. And uh, we appreciate the time and perspective. All right, man. Thank you guys for having me. Absolutely. Take care.